Hi, I'm Mike with Advanced RV, and this is Ben, and we're in Warunga. And uh, we're in this van because uh, Ben has done something that I've wanted to do for 10 years. The width in a Sprinter van and in a Transit is pretty limited. The, at this point in the, in the Sprinter, on the inside here, is 69 inches wide. And every time we come in, uh, bring the walls in or whatever, it, uh, it limits that pretty significantly. It closes the volume down, it makes it feel more constrained, uh, and it's just space you don't have. The other challenge that we have is blacking out the windows, so that if somebody's walking around this, they don't even know somebody's inside. The other objective we have, and we've done a lot of camping uh, in uh, pretty cold weather with this, down 10, 15 degrees, and so to eliminate any airflow from the window into the cabin is another objective. <clears throat> so Ben, taking those objectives and thinking about it and, uh, and uh, addressing uh, this client's objectives developed a, a, a solution to these things. So Ben, tell us a little bit about how you, uh, how you solve this challenge. Well, you know, the, like you said, the big problem with this is you don't have a lot of room between the wall panel and the steep metal. We slam it right against here. If you can see this without the panel, you would see that around the window, there's actually a big dish. There's a, it goes way back to the outside level of a layer of sheet metal. And so you have a space in there. But it turns out with a rather uh, simple and small roller, you can get a piece this wide in here and put it in the back of the wall panel, still get the panel all the way back, and you still have room to get a shade back there that can go all the way up and all the way down. And it's simple and effective and is doable on pretty much any one of these vans. What about light leakage, Ben? Is there any way for light to leak through there? I really don't think so. <laughs> we have a nice you can see the fabric is tight against the outside thanks to the curve of the van. The fabric actually is laying on there of its own, uh, its own accord, but there's also um, behind the uh, wall you can't see there's some plastic tracks that overlap the fabric and the bar at the bottom to keep everything in place and to keep it tight against the back. So while this thing is um, nice and loose, it can't come out unless you can do it on purpose if you ever have to. If you ever had to get this out, you can just turn this and pull the other end out and you can reach up in here and this just lifts up and out and the whole thing can slide out. I um, enlisted the help of people who are very good at internet searching, better than me. As I searched, I've just become overwhelmed with all the different window covering manufacturers and there's dozens of different solutions and blah, blah, blah. So I let Trevor stick him out and like, find me the smallest roller shade tube you can with a spring re recoil mechanism. And the next day he had one in my hand that was just right. I mean, just right. And it was easy to to adapt that to our purposes because it comes with a cardboard too. We don't use that, we use aluminum. And I just took their mechanism and put it into the aluminum. And then Dave helped me made a couple of adapters for the end pin to fit in because of course our tube is not the same diameter as what it comes with. But it's just, you machine it out of plastic and he does it so fast, I, I get back to my bench, he's already done with it. So he made a couple pieces for me on this one and uh, it works really well. And uh, Ben does robotic stuff and some of the uh motors he's used to uh, electrify this shade. I'm just, I can't tell you when something's been in the back of my head and kind of friction for 10 years, mm -hmm. and then you come up with an elegant solution like this, I really appreciate it and it's awesome. So yeah. thanks again, Glad Ben. To help. It amuses me. <laughs>